Begin with a history making night on the last day of the Democratic National Convention with Vice President Kamala Harris officially accepting her party's nomination for president. Harris is the first black and South Asian woman to accept the presidential nomination for a major political party. And as the vice president took the stage, she saw a sea of female delegates wearing all white, a nod to women's suffragists who fought and won the right to vote more than 100 years ago. In a passionate and fiery speech, the former prosecutor laid out her case to defeat former President Donald Trump in the election that's just now 74 days away. With this election has a precious, fleeting opportunity to move past the bitterness, cynicism, and divisive battles of the past, a chance to chart a new way forward. Just imagine Donald Trump with no guardrails and how he would use the immense powers of the presidency of the United States. Not to improve your life, not to strengthen our national security, but to serve the only client he has ever had, himself. I promise to be a president for all Americans. You can always trust me to put country above party and self. I accept your nomination to be president of the United States. Well, a new Gallup poll shows Harris's favorability has grown 13 percent among Democrats and independent voters since becoming the presidential nominee. So joining me now for a full recap of last night uh, is CBS News chief election and campaign correspondent Robert Costa. So, Robert, what we had heard about the speech uh, earlier yesterday was that it was going to allow Kamala Harris to introduce herself to Americans who still don't really know her story. And one of the things that people said they wanted to hear more is about her policy. What will America look like should she become the president? Is that what we heard? Good morning. Great to be with you from here in Chicago. Last night, Vice President Harris did try to introduce herself to the country. Being vice president is a position where you're able to, in some way, conceptualize an agenda, but you're really always following President Biden. And you're seeing what right now with Vice President Harris, somebody who is also not trying to detail every single policy position at this point, because she's trying to focus more on the introductory phase of this campaign, which really only began about a month ago after President Biden decided to exit the race. What was notable was she decided to frame the stakes of this election by saying that former President Donald Trump, in her view, is a threat to American democracy. And she made an overture to suburban Republicans, urban Republicans, centrist independents, those who might not be inclined to vote for her. She said that at this point, there's a choice between Trump and her. And it's really, yes, a policy debate, but it's also a stark choice as she sees it. So during her speech, she certainly uh, touched on all a number of different issues, uh, border security, uh, to middle class uh, tax cuts, the, the war in Israel b with, between Israel and Hamas, and abortion. Here's what she had to say about the GOP's plan for reproductive rights. He and his allies would limit access to birth control, ban medication abortion, and enact a nationwide abortion ban with or without Congress. And get this, get this, he plans to create a national anti-abortion coordinator and force states to report on women's miscarriages and abortions. Simply put, they are out of their minds. So just to clarify a little bit, you sort of led into that saying that this is the GOP's plan for reproductive rights. I'm sure the GOP would characterize it a little differently. This is the way uh, uh, the vice president understands it. Um, I'm curious about reproductive rights and just how important of an issue you think this will be um, for the Harris Waltz uh, campaign strategy. I think earlier in the year, it seemed like abortion was going to be the issue. Since then, things like the economy, border, the war in Israel. Israel, that's all sort of come up as well as 
very important issues. Those are all important issues. What's interesting as this campaign really starts to heat up is that abortion rights, just like in 2022 in the midterm elections, remains at the fore of the national debate. And Vice President Harris has carved out her own space inside of the administration as an advocate for abortion rights. And as she puts it, reproductive freedoms, she's put it really at the center of her own agenda working with President Biden. And they believe that the, these issues will activate many voters nationwide, not just core Democratic voters, but those who maybe don't even vote, non-voters, but who will be pulled out to vote this November because they want to protect abortion rights. And we have seen ballot issues pop up across the country in places like Battleground, Arizona, where abortion rights will be part of the conversation, to be sure, in the final weeks of this campaign. And it's about Democrats also trying to take the concept of freedom away from the Republicans. Former President Trump, as we've covered him for the past decade, is trying to try to steal away some of the issues and positions from Democrats on matters like trade. He has spoken in a democratic way, a populist sense at times. And, and now, when it comes to the, the issue of freedom or the word freedom, Democrats are trying to take that and make a pitch to Republicans that they are the party of freedom, not Republicans. So this is an ideological debate, a policy debate, but it's also one about a political framework. Uh, so last night, there was uh, no shortage of high-profile speakers, um, from Governor Gretchen Whitmer to Senator Mark uh, Kelly, Eva Longoria, the actress, even former GOP Representative Adam Kitzinger. What were your sort of biggest highlights from the week? The biggest highlight by far in terms of it, the political impact, two things. Vice President Harris's speech and, and vice presidential nominee Governor Tim Walz's speech. Political conventions have lost their power as convening gatherings for parties to fight out policy positions and to come up with a platform. What these really are about now is trying to get a few million people in the country to tune in, whether it's 10 million, 15 million, or 20 million, and see if they can pay attention to what the candidates are saying. Can they give them a real look, a real opportunity? And we hear a lot about celebrities, possible surprise guests, uh, different moments that, that really capture people on social media, like when Oprah Winfrey came on stage, or Pink sang a song last night with her family on acoustic guitar. And, and there's no doubt that a lot of people really appreciate those moments, especially the Democrats in attendance. But at the same time, it's about Walls and Harris. Can they capture the moment? Can they be in command of the Democratic Party? That was what this convention mm. was really all about. Right. Uh, Robert Costa, thank you very much.